Hello, my name is Manuel. This is my channel, Fancy Manuel. Welcome back to my channel. And today I am doing something kind of interesting. At least I think it's interesting. Today I will be showing you my vinyl record setup. Basically, what I use to store my records, what do I use to play my records, you know, the record player I'm using, the speakers, all of the accessories I use for my records. I will be showing it all off in this one video and as a little bonus i will be showing off my seven inch record collection it's just five records and i think i've shown off a couple of them in the past but just for funsies i'm gonna show them all off in this video at the end i don't know if you guys know this but if you watch some of my very first music related content on my channel you would know that i used to have one of those suitcase record players ah! which everybody hates and although I personally never had an issue with it, I can see why a lot of people would, especially with the smaller plate. You definitely need a full plate for the records and the speakers were pretty trash. So ever since then, I've been slowly improving my record setup. And although it's not anything crazy, I do think it's pretty good and pretty affordable. So if you want to cop anything that I have, I will definitely link everything down below. All the accessories, the record player, the speakers, the sh shelving, I'll link it down below not sponsored whatsoever and yeah i think this will be a fun video again it's a pretty affordable setup so i'm sure if you save up a bit of money maybe even wait till black friday you could get a pretty similar setup like mine so yeah i'm excited to show you guys my record setup but before we do before we dive in if you like music related content like this please subscribe since that is what i do here and if you're already subscribed and you want more of this for some reason check out my instagram twitter tiktok okay now let's dive in so here's my record player setup i'm gonna start with the actual shelf please don't mind my mess over here or here but yeah this shelf is from ikea i don't remember what it's called but i will put the images of the name on the screen as i speak and i know it's still at ikea i was just there so it's for sure still there if you want to cop it but yeah these are like cube shelves there is no backing back there as you can see the light is from my window there's no backing which kind of sucks when it comes to organizing the records but there are easy fixes you can do to make sure your records aren't like falling back i guess i'm personally just too lazy to fix it myself but yeah these are the cube shelvings i got from ikea this is my record player i got it from walmart and it's an audio technica i'll put the exact model on the screen right now but yeah it's a pretty good record player pretty affordable record player i think it's like around 150 bucks which i guess depends on your definition of affordable but it's definitely one of the best in the market for that price range and probably anything under a hundred dollars isn't that good to be honest with you but for what it is i think it's great i think this is a really good record player although it's pretty easy to use let me show you guys how to like actually use it so obviously this is to start it if you push to this this arm will go up and be placed on the record by itself you don't need to move it by yourself i guess you can if you want to but just stick with this it's easier you will less likely scratch your records and if you want to stop playing your record and have the arm move back, you push the stop. This button is to lift this up and down. You use this. So if you want to play a 12 inch record, you have it here. If you want to play seven inch, you move it down here. That will move the needle where it should be. So if it's 12 inch, it'll move like around here. If it's a seven inch, it'll move like around here. If you have a seven inch, you would need to push this. This is going to change the speed of the record player and how fast it's going. This record player is Bluetooth compatible, but I don't really use the Bluetooth feature. I just hook up the speakers with wires into this record player. It did come with its own slip mat, but I replaced it with this Amoeba Music Store slip mat that I bought online. And for some reason, they gave me two. It literally says two slip mats per order. Apparently I can't read. Stay in school kids, oh my god. The speakers I have are Microlab speakers. They're nothing crazy, but they do the job. Again, I'll put the exact model in the description and on the screen right now. But yeah, I think they're pretty good. They're pretty affordable. They are like under a hundred bucks if you're concerned about the price. Since I only play my records in my room, I don't need the speakers to be that loud anyways. These speakers aren't crazy loud, so I think they're great for what I want. And there's my little Lego guy. Say hi. The speaker is pretty easy to use. You go back here. There's a switch that you can turn it on and off. If you have your speakers hooked up with wires into 
the record player once it's white it's ready to go and you use this volume knob to like change the volume obviously but if you press on it you could change the speaker settings and now it's bluetooth compatible and you could use the bluetooth to play music from your phone or whatever device you have now i know someone's gonna mention it so i'm just gonna nip it on the butt right now yeah technically you shouldn't have your speakers on the same surface as your record player because the speakers will most likely vibrate and it's gonna mess up your record that's playing on the record player might skip maybe even possibly scratch your record i don't have room in my room so i can't really do that and i'm not gonna be crazy enough to hang my speakers from the ceiling that, that's weird i've seen people do that i that's too much you're going too far i don't play my music very loudly with these speakers so for me i think it's fine i, I really haven't had an issue with playing my music on these speakers that is on the same surface as my record player but i know there's a lot of snobby people out there that will have a problem with that just mind your own business leave me alone to clean my records i have this it is a big fudge cleaning kit in the pouch it has the big fudge cleaning uh what is it sponge I, I don't know but big fudge cleaner comes with a spray you use this to wipe off like the dust off of the cleaner and this is what you use to clean your needle you gotta clean your needle you gotta replace your needle keep that in mind really quickly let me show you guys how i actually clean my records you're gonna want to get the record player to spin your record and you're gonna want to lift it up and then push start if you only push start as you can see right now the i don't know what this is called like the arm i guess that holds the needle will just move and start playing your record like that so instead of doing that you're gonna want to lift it up so it doesn't go down while you're cleaning you don't want to clean your record and play the record at the same time so you can lift it up you can push start so it can start spinning you're gonna get this big fudge cleaner and the spray do a couple sprays then get in the grooves mostly focus on the grooves but cleaning the whole thing doesn't hurt and just try not to press too hard you don't want to ruin your record just let it glide for a bit there was not a lot dirtiness there there's some it's a little dirty clean it with the brush just like that so it could be nice and clean when you clean your records next time voila okay to actually clean your needle you're gonna lift this up you're gonna grab this tool and you're gonna gently just scrape all the little dust and gunk that might be there again gently you don't want to move or mess up the needle but yeah that's how you clean it again do it gently so you don't mess it up and mess up your records i have some more accessories inside this amoeba music store bag i've got some extra slip mats and a giant uh, amoeba s music store sticker that i don't know what to do with you gotta make sure you got some sleeves for your records and i got these i forgot which store i honestly forgot but obviously they were on sale three bucks for 25 i thought that was a steal so i finally remembered where i bought them from i bought them from fye which is a store at my local mall i think there's several stores around the u.s maybe elsewhere as well but apparently they don't sell them online so here's an alternative <laughs> so yeah you gotta sleeve up your records even your seven inches for my 12 inch records i put them in these outer sleeves hudson hi-fi is the brand and they're great i also use their inner sleeves but i ran out i've been meaning to buy some more from amazon which is where i get them from but they're great they're highly recommended by like other record collecting nerds i think they're great let me show you one of the sleeves this is one of the outer sleeves let me show you an example of one of the inner sleeves the inner sleeves look like this and they're awesome they do a great job at protecting my records this is how i sleeve up my records so for single lps like this you got to put the jacket inside the outer sleeve you can put the disc inside the inner sleeve and once the disc gets inside the inner sleeve you could put it behind the jacket but inside of the outer sleeve this is so that it protects the jacket from ring wear ah! so it should look like this 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 should be the setup for a single lp for a double lp it's gonna be a little similar you're gonna put the jacket inside the outer sleeve. You're gonna put the discs in inner sleeves. You're gonna put one of those discs on the outside like before. The key difference is since there's two discs 
inside two different inner sleeves, you're gonna put the second disc in between the jacket like this, not inside of the actual jacket, but in between the gatefold basically is where you're gonna put it to again, avoid ring wear. Now, if your record is a double LP, but there's no gatefold, you should still put the jacket inside the outer sleeve, the discs in its inner sleeves. You're gonna put one disc on the outside like this. And since the jacket should hold two LPs, it should be bigger than single LP jackets. So it is fine to put only one of the discs inside of it. It shouldn't cause ring wear if you only put one of the LPs in there. Now I do have records that have more than two LPs. This has three LPs, but I don't have big enough outer sleeves for these. So I, I can't help you with any tips in regards to records with more than two discs. I'm pretty sure they sell like oversized outer sleeves for bigger records like these. I just haven't bought them before but I'll try to do that soon. So yeah, that's my vinyl record setup. This is my entire setup and all the accessories I use for my vinyl records. If you have any questions, let me know. And again, everything I mentioned in this video will be in the description down below so you can get them yourself if you want something I mentioned. I highly recommend these products, especially if you're on a budget and you're willing to spend a bit. I recommend everything in this video. I hope you guys enjoy looking through my record setup. Now I'm gonna show you as my tiny little seven inch record collection because why not like i'm pretty sure i have shown a couple off but not the entire collection so i'll do that right now the two that i for sure believe i have shown off in a video before are these these are two jpeg mafia seven inch singles this one is for bold and the bald remix with Denzel Curry right there. These are some great tracks from one of my favorite rappers and producers right now, JPEG Mafia. Here is the inner sleeve with the credits and the lyrics on both sides for each song. And then the record itself is standard black, nothing too crazy, very tiny. You can hold it in one hand. Isn't that crazy? So that is for Bald. Probably one of my favorite singles from JPEG Mafia throughout the years. And this little guy, here's the back, has the song Living Single on it. Here are the lyrics. And here's an image of Peggy with, I guess, the credits. What's cool about this, it comes in this little white record. It's a white pressing. So this is one song, one song only. Only this side have grooves. The other side is unplayable, does not have grooves. While Bald is more of a rap track, this is kind of more R&B. He goes in his R&B bag with this one, singing in heavy autotune, which I actually do enjoy. So yeah, these two are some great singles from one of my favorite rappers right now. Okay, the next seven inch I'm gonna show off, I don't remember if I've shown it off before, but I'll show it off now. It's Ask Anyone by Lice. Lice is a rap duo consisting of Aesop Rock and Homeboy Sandman. Here's the back. And this is a tribute song to MF Doom. They ma made this song rapping over a Doom beat, tributing Doom after his death. It is limited edition. It shows which number I have, uh, which is, what is it? 2,398. This is the 2,398th pressing of this single. If you take out this cardboard part and the record. You can open it up and it has the lyrics for both Aesop Rock and Homeboy Sandman's verses, which I thought is pretty neat. The record comes like this, which has a picture of Doom, maskless, but you know, covering his face, making sure he's still mysterious. And you, you might be wondering where is the mask? It's right behind. Look at that. Look at this etching. This is so sick. Obviously you can't play off of this side. If you want to play the actual song, you have to play from here. But this is a nice touch. I really like this. It's really cool. You know, MF Doom is one of my favorite rappers of all time. When he died, it really sucked. It had a huge impact on me and clearly it impacted others. As you can tell by listening to this track, which I highly recommend. If you have never listened to Ask Anyone before, Please do, especially if you're a Doom fan. You might even like Aesop Rock and Homeboy Sandman after you listen to this track. I really like Aesop Rock. I don't listen to Homeboy Sandman a lot, but they're both great and what they do here is phenomenal. So check it out. And speaking of Aesop Rock, I actually have an Aesop Rock 7 inch right here for Long Legged Larry. That's the front, here's the back. Long Legged Larry 
It's a song about a frog with pretty long legs. That's why they call him Long-Legged Larry. And he is actually kind of like a superhero. In the song, Aesop Rock talks about how Long-Legged Larry. And let me actually show you an image of Long-Legged Larry since this record comes with this little cardboard access code, I guess, for the song. Here's the record, comes in this white sleeve. Throughout the song, Aesop Rock raps about how Long-Legged Larry basically saves the day, helps save cats from trees, helps save princesses, stuff like that. Here is the actual record, which comes in this beautiful green pressing. I really love it. And here's the back of the record. There's grooves on both sides. The front side has the actual song. The back side has the instrumental. And yeah, this is a fun, actually family friendly rap song. Like you could play this to your child, your grandchild, your little sibling, your little cousins. I have very young cousins. So this is definitely something I would play for them the next time I see them. It's a fun song. It's hard to hate on a song this fun, creative, silly, quirky. I definitely recommend it. Now the last single I'm gonna show off, the last seven inch I'm going to show off is Washes in the Blood by Kanye West and Travis Scott. Here is the back. Two pretty controversial artists, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, I really love this song. I don't love the packaging though. Like this, this is a very cheap material. It feels like gift wrap to me. It even like ripped on the top already, but at least the record is cool. Comes in red. It seems like both sides have roofs. I don't remember if they both play the same song or one side is the instrumental. I guess I'll find out later. I just checked both sides of the records play the same song. But yeah, this is a gnarly song. It reminds me of Kanye during his Yeezus phase with how industrial the production is and how manic both Travis and Kanye sound on that track. It's a cool track, it just has very piss poor packaging, but. Other than that, it's a cool single, cool seven inch. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to show off today. I hope you guys enjoyed looking at my record setup and looking through my seven inch records. Please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll gladly answer them and try to help as much as I can. Again, everything will be linked down in the description down below if you wanna purchase them yourself, not sponsored. But yeah, I think that's it. So if you liked the video, like the video, comment down below what record player do you have do you have any seven inches? What seven inches do you have? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like music related content like this, please subscribe since that is what I do here. And if you're already subscribed and you want more of this for some reason, check out my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. But yeah, I'm done here. So thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Goodbye.